In 2025, artificial intelligence scanned the terracotta army, and what it uncovered sent shockwaves through the scientific world. Inside those silent warriors, the AI detected hidden codes etched into the clay, markings invisible to the human eye, patterns that align perfectly with ancient star maps, engravings that read less like decoration and more like a message sealed away for over 2,000 years. For centuries, we believed these statues were nothing more than guardians for a long-dead emperor. But the truth is darker. These warriors weren't just built to protect a tomb. They were built to protect a secret. And now, for the first time in history, that secret is breaking open. If you're ready to see what the AI really found, hit that like button, subscribe, and type decode in the comments. Because what comes next will change how you see history forever. The Watchers Awaken. That is what it feels like, standing before them. Over 7,000 warriors, stone eyes fixed in eternal silence, staring forward with an intensity no sculptor should have captured. Their faces are not masks. They are portraits, each one unique, carved with unsettling precision. Guardians of the afterlife, perhaps. But AI revealed something historians never dared to suggest. What if these soldiers were never meant for the emperor's tomb, but for something far darker? Because the patterns don't lie. Formations aligned with impossible accuracy. Rows echoing strategies that look less like mortal warfare and more like signals. Messages mapped onto the earth itself. But this story does not begin with discovery. It begins with obsession. Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China, was not satisfied with ruling men. He wanted dominion over death itself. He scoured mountains for alchemists, swallowed mercury-laced elixirs, dispatched fleets to find fabled islands of immortality. All failed, and so his vision turned inward. If he could not live forever, then his empire would. He would build an army that would follow him into eternity. Tens of thousands of laborers toiled in silence, shaping warriors by fire and clay. Their own fates sealed as their creations took form. The emperor's paranoia burned so fiercely that even knowledge became dangerous. Books were burned, scholars executed, artisans buried alive, lips sealed in earth so no whisper of his secret could ever escape. Centuries passed, and the empire's obsession with eternity lay hidden beneath the soil. Until 1974, farmers digging for water struck something harder than rock, a shard of clay. An arrowhead. Then, emerging from the dust, the broken face of a soldier staring back at them. At first, they thought little of it. Some even sold fragments to local traders. But officials intervened, and excavation began. What emerged was not one statue, nor a dozen, but thousands, warriors, horses, chariots, a ghostly army standing in rows, locked in formation, waiting. It was hailed as one of the greatest discoveries of the 20th century. But even then, no one understood what truly slept beneath. No one realized the Terracotta Army was more than art, more than burial guardians. They were a riddle sealed in clay, one only a machine mind could unlock. And when the veil was lifted, the sight was staggering. Rows upon rows, more than 7,000 warriors frozen in silence their eyes fixed forward, unblinking, as if waiting for a command that will never come. Each one is unique. Not generic masks, but faces, scarred cheeks, weathered brows, lips pressed tight in grief or fury. No two alike. And that raises the most chilling question. Were these men imagined or remembered? Were they modeled after real soldiers, immortalized in clay? Or worse, were they portraits of the dead themselves, preserved not in flesh, but in fired earth? 
The unease only deepens when you see their arrangement. Infantry at the front. Archers to the flanks. Cavalry coiled for sudden strikes. Commanders standing behind. This is not random art. It's strategy. A battlefield manual sculpted in clay. Every stance, every weapon, every row is doctrine. To stand among them feels like stepping into a ghostly war council, one still preparing for a battle that may never end. Qin Shi Huang had turned even death into a military campaign. Yet above them all looms the true enigma, the forbidden tomb, the emperor's mausoleum, a massive pyramid-shaped mound still sealed after more than 2,000 years. Unlike the pits, it has never been opened. Not once. Ancient accounts describe a subterranean city, laid out like his imperial capital. Walls, palaces, courtyards, even parks. If those records are true, then Qin did not simply entomb an army. He buried his entire empire beneath the soil, and its silence was enforced with blood. Chronicles claim the artisans who built it were sealed inside, buried alive so that no map, no whisper of its design, would ever escape. Qin's paranoia followed him into death, an eternal fortress of secrets, guarded not just by stone, but by silence. But silence isn't the only guardian. Legends say rivers of mercury flow through vast underground channels shimmering like oceans in the dark. Some say they gave Qin command over the elements, binding water and metal to his will. Others believe they were traps, poisonous defenses meant to kill any intruder. Modern science confirms part of the legend. Soil surveys around the tomb show mercury levels so high they can't be natural. The earth itself leaks toxins, as though warning explorers to keep away. Officially, China refuses excavation for preservation. But the truth is obvious. The danger is real. Opening the tomb could unleash something far deadlier than decay. And yet, even at the edges of this sealed empire, the scale is staggering. Archaeologists have found entertainers buried alive, musicians with their instruments, Dancers stilled in mid-motion, officials entombed to serve, horses sacrificed and harnessed to clay chariots. Qin didn't just prepare for the afterlife. He recreated his entire kingdom beneath the ground, a shadow civilization mirroring the living world above. But perhaps the most astonishing detail is not the scale, but the engineering. Hidden drainage systems flood defenses, hydraulic controls designed centuries before such mastery should have existed. This was not merely a tomb. It was an underground citadel, self-sustaining, impregnable, eternal, a sealed empire designed to outlast stone and dynasty alike, its ruler enthroned at the heart of it, untouchable. And still, no one dares disturb it. The mound remains unbroken, Sealed by superstition, by poison, by something more. What lies inside has slept for over two millennia. Yet the deeper archaeologists probed the soil. The stranger the warnings became. Traces of something lethal bled up from the earth itself, echoing the most chilling rumors in ancient texts. Sima Qian once wrote of rivers of liquid mercury flowing within the emperor's hidden chambers crafted to mirror the seas and oceans of the known world. For centuries, historians dismissed it as metaphor. But when soil core samples revealed mercury concentrations hundreds of times higher than normal, the whispers hardened into fact. The evidence was undeniable. Something toxic and deliberate was buried beneath the surface. Scientists debated its meaning. Was it the byproduct of modern contamination seeping into the ground? Or had Qin Shi Huang's engineers actually achieved the unthinkable, building chemical rivers to guard their master in death? Then came the AI data, 
Using hyperspectral imaging, algorithms mapped underground anomalies no human eye had ever traced. The models revealed shifting patterns, veins of liquid-like movements trapped within sealed corridors. Against all probability, something beneath still flowed. The data suggested that reservoirs of mercury had not dried out or dissipated after two millennia, but remained active, pressing outward, a slow poison waiting for intrusion. Whether intentional trap or grandiose symbolism, it transformed the emperor's tomb from a relic of the past into a potential weapon of the present. To open it, some experts warned, might be to unleash not only secrets, but a deadly vapor meant to suffocate the living. It was in this tense climate that archaeologists returned in 2025 with the most advanced AI-assisted scanning technologies ever deployed. The Terracotta Army, long thought fully catalogued, suddenly appeared incomplete. Layers of data revealed hidden anomalies behind soldiers unearthed decades earlier. When processed through machine learning reconstruction, the scans began to reveal faces, subtly different, uniquely shaped, breaking away from the assumption that these were merely mass-produced effigies. And then came the most unsettling revelation, his expression. Not the grim discipline expected of a soldier, but a trace of something else. The lips were parted, caught between a breath and a word, the face suspended in a moment of unfinished speech, as if, at the instant of his entombment, he had been trying to speak, and that final utterance had been captured, immortalized, in clay. For years, scholars argued that the Terracotta Army were just symbols, idealized protectors meant to stand guard for eternity. But this discovery shattered that belief. These weren't nameless guardians. They were portraits. Real men, immortalized in clay, their identities locked inside for over 2,000 years. The scans went deeper. AI resurrected pigments invisible to the eye. Reds across armor, blues along tunics, flesh tones on lips and skin. Piece by piece, the dead rose in color. Warriors once thought gray and lifeless now stared back with darkened brows, tinted lips, and painted pupils. For a moment, they looked alive again. Then came the most disturbing revelation. When the officer's skull was reconstructed through forensic software, the dimensions aligned too perfectly with human anatomy. Every curve, every asymmetry, every fault screamed one thing. This wasn't a sculptor's imagination. It was a direct copy of a living man. Whispers spread among researchers. Had Qin Shi Huang found another path to immortality, not through alchemy, but through transference? To bind the spirits of his warriors into clay, to command them in death just as he did in life. And the scans went deeper. AI resurrected pigments invisible to the eye. Reds across armor, blues along tunics, flesh tones on lips and skin. Piece by piece, the dead rose in color. Warriors once thought gray and lifeless, now stared back with darkened brows, tinted lips, and painted pupils. For a moment, they looked alive again. And that's when a deeper truth began to surface. The resurrection wasn't random. Patterns emerged clearer with every scan. The low-ranking infantry? Repetition. Mass-produced. Almost faceless. But as the AI climbed the hierarchy, individuality sharpened. Jawlines sculpted with precision. Scars etched in detail. Postures radiating command. These weren't symbols. They were men. Qin Shi Huang hadn't just immortalized his soldiers. He had archived his generals, binding them in clay, one by one, their loyalty sealed for eternity. It no longer looks like an artistic triumph. It looks like a ledger, a census of souls, a catalog of power carved into eternity. And with that comes the darker question. Was art here weaponized? 
Was this sculpture a ritual? A soul-binding act, where generals who once commanded in life would be forced to command again in death, never released from the emperor's grip? But the horror doesn't end there. AI scans whisper a truth no human eye could have seen. The formation of the warriors, the hidden walls, the moats surrounding the tomb, they don't resemble defense. They resemble containment, a labyrinth built not to protect the emperor, but to seal something in. And then comes the anomaly, the discovery of organic remnants in layers that should have been sterile stone and clay, fragments of tissue, strands of something once alive. This should be impossible. And yet, the scans insist. Was Qin Shi Huang's obsession with immortality just madness? Or did he succeed in a way too twisted to comprehend? Did he discover something his world was not meant to hold? Or worse, did he create it? If the terracotta army is both fortress and prison, then what they guard is not just the body of a long-dead emperor, but the shadow of something still bound below. Legends speak of rivers of mercury flowing through the tomb, alchemists' elixirs brewed from poison, rituals meant to cheat death itself. Perhaps the army does not stand in defense, but in warning. Silent jailers holding the line for two thousand years. And yet, tourists stroll past above ground, snapping photos, marveling at craftsmanship. They do not feel the ground humming beneath them. They do not see the patterns AI is uncovering. The deeper the scans go, the stranger it becomes. Every discovery raises not answers, but dread. Perhaps the Terracotta Army is not about art not about politics, not even about burial. Perhaps it is about death itself and what waits beyond it. Qin Shi Huang once dreamed of ruling forever. And the chilling question is this, did he succeed? Or did he leave behind an army, not to defend eternity, but to warn us from it? If this revelation left you questioning everything you thought you knew about history, don't just scroll away. Hit that like button if you believe the Terracotta Army still guards a secret the world isn't ready for. Subscribe so you don't miss the next discovery hidden beneath the soil of our past. And if you're brave enough to stare into the mystery yourself, comment eternal below. Because this story is far from over.